Today we speak about context poisoning. And no, it's not about what you need to wash your hands before touching your keyboard. Although stale data can make an effect of a chicken who's been stored in your fridge for a couple of weeks. Let's go. We will talk about what is context poisoning, how it happens, how to prevent it, and then how to deal with that. First, we need to understand how it happens and what's the real cause. We already mentioned it a couple of times, LLMs are stateless. So each call will include the whole history of the conversation. And for each next call, it will be repeated again and again. Answers from the previous two calls or your feedback will be given to the model again. Once something gets into this history, it will stay there until it's removed by condensing or until you start a new task. Now, second thing. The data what goes to the model, the input, it's get concatenated into one massive vector of token ID, so we can say it for simplicity like in a very long string. And for model, it's hard to distinct, distinct sample, sample from a task, or understand uh, what was does it has to do. It needs to put effort into that to say so. Uh, so there can be difficulties with attention and the understanding what is what. That's why we uh, always recommend to give formatted input, like using XML, for example, or at least Markdown. And now together it brings into the it gets into the contamination problem. Once any mistake, any incorrect, any stale data, any hallucination gets into the context, it will stay there till the end of the days. And of course, it will affect the input. So people call it context poisoning. I prefer a word contamination. I think it describes situation better. But as the idea, if you don't want to live next to Chernobyl, you also don't want your uh, context to be contaminated. Typical cases uh, would be when you just begin working in the same task, but already doing something different, doing another task, or maybe even deploying the feature you just implemented uh, in the task A and just continue to deploy this feature um, in the same task. De DevOps and programmers are different jobs for a reason. So deployment and development are different purposes. And in this case, that's not precisely a mistake or old or stale data, but the concepts and actions and activities what model took before in your development task, it will work as a contamination affecting all the rest of the conversations. As model can't clearly say what this is valid, this is important, I have to consider this right now, and that stale I can completely ignore it. Model can't say it. So now, outdated context. Like, how many of you run into old uh, comments in your code that's not valid anymore completely? Like, some parts of the code has been removed, but comments are still there. I bet you met it many times before. At least I definitely did. So, model cannot distinct are those comments, comments valid or not, or at least it hurts for the model. That brings more problems. Then, contaminated input, like getting the wall debug log, um, uh, throwing the whole debug log uh, to the model, then only smart part is actually relevant to your problem. That makes big troubles to pro make big troubles to model and then output will be not the best. There are plenty of tools and a lot of MCPs. Using something won't produce it a mistake, error, what's been, for example, not anyhow relevant to your task, but just happened it because an MCP server couldn't reach some external API. Again, it's hard to tell for model if it's relevant to your problem you are trying to debug or it's something like completely different. It always also plays as a contamination. And then, of course, once model begins to hallucinate, especially on the high, uh, big uh, um, amount of context what it can deal with properly, then these hallucinations get into context and stays there forever. How to prevent it? Preventing it, we always will be speaking of uh, context uh, hygiene. So, think number first, really think number first. Start new tasks.
one job is done, start new one, even if you still have a lot, a lot of lot uh, of space until your context window uh, is full. Now, currently, mod in the modern models, uh, with the appearance of the models, what have like 2 million tokens context window, context window, big context window became uh, marketing bullshit. That model have 2 million context window doesn't mean it can deal with 2 million of tokens. It will begin to behave significantly earlier. I would say maximum at few hundred thousands of tokens, way before context window will be full. So start new task even if window is not full. Then watch what goes in, what watch what you put in, don't you don't give too much data, and specifically watch not giving stale data, what will distract model. Don't dump data into the context. Um, you can't expect good results uh, doing things like that. And also keep an eye on what's happening. Keep an eye on the tool output. If tools are reporting uh, proper data, always good if you can do that. In very short, if you treat the context like a junk drawer, junk will influence your response. I really like this phrase. I think it describes the situation very well. Now, how to fix it? There is no silver bullet and there is no simple solution. Once your task has been contaminated, there will be no magic button to clean it up, no wake-up prompt, maybe, maybe condensing. Uh, if you customize a condensing prompt with some specific instructions on what to remove, that could work. Again, I wouldn't count too much on that. But uh, there can be an attempt indeed. But how to deal, uh, how to fix it, how to deal with that for real? There is only one efficient method. Let it burn. Dispose this task, launch a new one, clean context, be more careful next time. That's the only efficient method to deal with context pollution. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Maybe in the future we will be. Um, clean context button, then I will let you know about that. Do not miss it. <laughs> subscribe to the channel. We are moving very fast. And I'm really glad we've covered topics of a context window and context and context again. And now we can move on to the next tools. We are going to learn how approving works and when we will create our own custom mod to simplify our development. See you in the next video.